So guys, I hope you all are doing well. So in my previous video, I talked about some of the challenges you might come across in job search after completing a psychology conversion degree in the UK. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the PhD challenges. So if you're someone who's interested in research in psychology, then this is the right video for you. As always, please hit the like button if you found this video helpful and definitely subscribe to my channel. To give you a very brief context of my own journey, I've always been interested in research and this is the reason I decided to, uh, to pursue my postgraduate studies in psychology abroad because back then I knew there were not enough opportunities like research opportunities in psychology in India. Things may be different now, so don't quote me on this. Anyways, no one told me about the challenges I might come across in job search and also PhD positions after completing a psychology conversion degree in the UK. I thought a master's conversion degree in psychology and my hard work would be enough, but generally that is not the case, especially if you are into research and you don't have a prior solid research background. UK is a hub of research and there's so much research going on in this country, including psychology. But as you may know that when demand is less but supply is more, then competition becomes really, really tough. As mentioned in my previous videos, research positions in the UK in general are really, really competitive. Sometimes you have 200 people, 150 people applying for two to three positions. So it gets really, really competitive. And I think it is not just the case in the UK. I think it's the same in every other country. Pursuing a career in research is really, really competitive. And the same thing happens with PhD positions. In the UK, not every PhD project is fully funded. I know this may sound weird, but that is the reality. And in this case, students end up self-funding their PhDs. What it means is that they end up paying their international tuition fee, their living expenses, their traveling expenses like any conferences they attend and in majority of the cases it is not an option for students because it is not practical to self-fund their PhDs. And in case of fully funded projects like PhD projects, opportunities are a bit less and even in those cases there is a capping to how many international students would be admitted. For example, some PhD projects even for international students take a maximum of 6 students in a year and there's a limit of two international students out of six. So if you do the math, you will understand how competitive that becomes. And unless you have a very solid research background, your chances are very, very less. I don't mean to scare you, but I'm telling you all this from my own experiences. And before I proceed further, I just want to clarify that whatever I'm talking about in this video, I'm only talking about psychology and not any other discipline, because the funding situation can be very different in different programs such as engineering, science, technology, and even humanities. Does it mean you won't get a PhD position? That is not the case at all. And your journey will be very different from another person, depending upon your previous education and your professional experiences. For example, someone who did an undergrad in English literature or history, then that person's journey is going to be very different from someone who, for example, did undergrad in computer science. Because a lot of people in computer science are now working in psychology, like cognitive psychology and behavioral science. And a lot of PhD projects do require people who have the skills that students from computer science background already have. What is the solution? Usually, there are two ways to get into a PhD program after completing a psychology conversion degree. First, and please hear me out, keep applying to jobs and if you get too lucky, you might get the job you wanted. Gather the experiences and then apply to PhD projects. However, this path is a little bit uncertain and you don't know if you, things are going to happen in your favor. I know you must be thinking why I'm talking about luck and why I'm being so vague but trust me, that is the reality. A lot of times, people end up having things in their favor and there's no single explanation for it. There could be so many explanations for it. There could be two explanations or three or five or multiple, you don't know. Second way, and this is purely based on my experiences and after talking to people with similar experiences, is to get another master's degree, but this time a specialized one. Not like the conversion degree, because in a specialized master's, you will get a chance to learn specific modules, develop specific skills in statistics, research methodology, and statistical software. For example, someone doing a specialized master's degree in cognitive psychology or health psychology 
will be learning specific modules that are related to cognitive psychology or health psychology and they will not be learning the entire psychology or like general psychology and when you learn specific modules you develop specific skills then that definitely makes your profile a lot more stronger and you definitely get an advantage in phd applications i know this may not be possible for every student but some students do get into phd programs through this path okay guys that is all i wanted to say in this video uh, tell me if you guys have anything interesting to share like your personal experiences with phd applications and how to get into phd programs and please please comment below it would be so interesting to have your views coming in and if you think this video was worth your time then please give it a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel i will see you in my next video until then take care and stay happy